This is the third video on parametric equations. In this video we're going to have a look at how you can convert uh, parametric equations into Cartesian form when they've been given to you in terms of trigonometric functions. Just as a quick recap, let's remind ourselves how we would do this with simple, uh, simple parametric equations. These are very simple. All I would do is I'd rearrange to make t the subject here. So I'd add the two to both sides, and then I would substitute this in over here, so I would get y equals x plus 2 all squared, and then I could expand this out. No, I've expressed these parametric equations in Cartesian form, as in it's only in terms of x and y. Now, if we try to use the same method for doing trigonometric functions, it's going to get uh, quite complicated because it's much harder to rearrange. Let's say, for example, I had y equals sine t and I had x equals cos t. And if I try to do the same idea here, making t the subject is quite awkward because I will have to have t equals arc cos x and then substituting that into here gets quite messy because then I've got y equals sine arc cos t, uh, x sorry. and this sine of arc cos it, it, it's quite messy so we don't really want to go down that loop, especially when there's a much better option available to us. So, let's just remind ourselves of what we're trying to do here. We've got two, um, we've got our x coordinate, which is given as a function of t. We've got our y coordinate, which is given as a different function of t. And what we're trying to do here is to link these two things together. Now, we're lucky in that we know lots of different um, trigonometric identities now. Um, and they can help us link different functions together. So, for example, we know that sine squared plus cos squared is the same thing as 1. So this can help us to link a sine and a cos together. We also know, dividing each term here by sine squared, I know that 1 plus cot squared is equal to cosec squared, and I also know dividing each term through by cos squared, I'm going to get to tan squared plus 1 is equal to sec squared. So this can help me to link tan and sec together, this can help me to link cot and cosec together, and as I said this can help me link the sine and the cos together. So they're really useful, but not only that, we also have the double angle formula. So, let's get a bit more space. We've also got uh, that sine 2t is equal to 2 sine t cos t. We've also got cos 2t is equal to, uh, right, there's three different ways of writing this, remember, we know that's going to be cos squared t minus sine squared t. We could also say that it's going to be 2 cos squared t minus 1, or uh, 1 minus 2 sine squared t. Uh, so we've, we've seen these identities loads now, we've worked on them. Um, quite a lot in terms of proving identities and in terms of um, using them for integration. So um, we, you should hopefully be very familiar with these by now. Um, but we can also have, use them to help us to link these two equations together to eliminate the t. So for example, I have got here that my x coordinate is given in terms of as sine t plus 2 and my y coordinate is given as cos t minus 3. So, uh, I can see I've got a sine t here and a cos t here 
And so if I want to try and bring these two things together, well, I know that sine squared plus cos squared is 1. So if I can make the sine and the cos the subjects here, then square the sine, square the cos, add them together, I will get 1. And that will help me to eliminate the, t the t's. So, I'm going to make sine t the subject here. So doing that, I'll get x minus t. So taking that two away. Over here, I'm going to make cos t the subject. So I'm going to add the three. It's both sides. Okay, right, so the rule I know is sine squared t plus cos squared t. Uh, would have to be 1. So if I'm going to square this, I would get x minus 2 all squared. So if I square the sine, I would have to square the x minus 2. So sine squared is x minus 2 squared. Same idea over here. I'm going to square the cos t. And so if I square the cos t, I would get y plus 3. Squared, which is equal to 1, and hopefully you should recognise that. It's a circle. It's a circle with centre 2, minus 3, and with radius 1. So I'm not going to expand anything out there, I'm just going to leave it like this. This is my um, curve in Cartesian form. Okay, we're going to do a second example. Now this example is a little bit more complicated. The first thing I notice is that's a sine t, that's a sine 2t. So in order for me to try and link these two things together, I need um, it to be a single t here. I can't have that as a 2t. I need these to match up. So I'm going to expand this out using the double angle form. Okay, so from this, and I'm trying to link these two things together. Now, I could replace this sine t with an x, easily. It's then what could I do with this cos t? Well, remember, I know sine squared plus cos squared is equal to 1. And I know that sine is x. So this is x squared plus cos squared is equal to 1. So I'm just going to rearrange to make cos t the subject now. So I will get cos squared t is 1 minus x squared. So cos t is going to be root 1 minus x squared. All right, okay, so I can replace the sine t with x. I can replace the cos t with 1 minus, uh, so root 1 minus x squared. And so I can now say that y is equal to 2 x multiplied by the square root of 1 minus x squared. And there we have it. I have eliminated the, the functions of t and I've got my curve expressed only in terms of x and y. So it is in Cartesian form.